So <coughs> what we have planted here, I also planted alternating rows of grafted trees and seedling trees because we needed some data on this, not just heated arguments. <laughs> so, kind of by an accident of what they did at the University of Missouri, who has long been a promoter of grafted trees, but they accidentally created a good experiment for me. <clears throat> so they have a bunch of grafted cultivars, including a lot of stuff that I sent to them, plus what other people sent to them. They got the best cultivar collection in the country. Although it's a little outdated now because they haven't added anything to it in the last 10 or 15 years, so, and we've got a lot of good stuff since then. But back from the middle 1990s to about 2005 or 6, they were collecting stuff. And, and then they had 50 cultivars and they whittled that down and like their best three was peach, ching, and core. Uh, peach ortet from over here. Uh, core is Clarence Core, the grower in Pennsylvania. And ching is the backyard tree from western Kentucky that has turned out to be one of the best. So they took those cultivars and they said, okay, now we're going to create a grafted orchard like a production orchard with which we can do cultural practices studies. Well, they actually put peach, ching, and Willamette, which is one of the Dunstan hybrids. And I said I don't like the Dunstan hybrids. And after about th after those trees started producing, uh, Ken Hunt said, "Yeah, I don't like the Willamette either. We're going to take it out." Well, they didn't take them out. They just top worked them to core. So it was peach, ching, Willamette. Now it's peach, ching, core. For a couple years, all they had was peach ching because the, the Willamette were cut out and the core hadn't started producing yet. So in one of those years, I got seed from that orchard, which was nothing but peach and ching grafted trees. And, and so that's what, this row is all those offspring. This row is all grafted ching, except for that tree, I think that one's a rootstock because it's it's not not as compact and productive as these other trees. There's always a problem with grafted trees. You, you, it's easy to for a bud below the bud that you think you have to turn into the tree. Uh, and then the next row is peach ching seedlings except for that little one that's different. And then the next row is all grafted peach. So we have grafted rows of both parents, and we have seedling rows of their offspring all together here. And, and this is about the perfect time to look at this, because, well, one, you can see those Qing trees have a really nice crop this year, and maybe kind of like more nuts per branch than these trees do, but these trees got more branches. <laughs> And so we're actually collecting the nuts from each tree. And this is in the deer fence, so we don't not lose them too many to deer. Um, and it also turns out, this is a lucky accident. That, you know, Amy is working on studying blossom end rot, which is our biggest disease problem. It turns out that Ching is fairly resistant to it, and peach is really susceptible to it. So we have a resistant and susceptible parent, and we've got their offspring here growing right beside the parents. So for that study, we got like the perfect setup, and nobody knew that when we set it up. Happy accident. Happy accident. Uh, but anyway, with regard to, you know, if you would just say, okay, do you want to have this row of trees or this row of trees? Well. This one, you, you might, you know, it would, you could go one way or the other. Although there are a lot of these chin trees, like that one and, and more up there, that have died. And I, and I did have to replace these. That's the trouble with grafted trees for unknown reasons. They don't live very long sometimes, but sometimes they're just fine. 
Um, is there like a well-developed like bank of rootstocks for chestnut? Like there are for like apples and no. other things? No, there are no clonal rootstocks. So we just put them on seedlings. Mm. And that's another variable that probably ought to be studied. You know, probably some seedlings are better than others. The conventional wisdom is that you should, you should graft like Ching onto Ching seedlings. In other words, the closer related the, the rootstock and the cyan is, the better the success. But I have an alternative hypothesis that there's no doubt some trees graft better than others, and we don't know why. And Ching is one of the poorer ones. And I think if you use the Ching as a rootstock and the Ching as a cyan, you get a lot of failures that way too. So I have seen enough failures of a cyan on its own seedlings rootstock that I don't bother to do that um, because it's hard. To, you know, if you got, got a good tree and you want to graft it, you don't have seedlings from that this year. You have to take you a year to make them. And so I'm all the time finding new ones, and I just put them on whatever I have, and you know, plan on half of them dying even after they start to grow. So, so we tolerate the problems of grafted trees. And if you get down on the road and look up, it's easy to pick out the grafted rows from the seedling rows. Uh, another little caveat here, probably from about this row down, down in that corner, the trees are smaller. That's reclaimed strip mine land. And like from here up is undisturbed. And it's, it's a big difference. <clears throat>